Hello and welcome to episode 20 of Kerbal Space Endeavor. We are still in the reboot section and we jump ahead quite a few days, months and more and we have a launch coming up for our new and better satellite network over Kerbin since the previous network was torn down and taken apart because the Kerbal Space Program has to start it anew. So yeah, this time I did a lot better. I didn't frack up and I built a single launch for all three satellites instead of launching just one every single time. And there goes the connectors that held it more stable. And uh, yeah, I was actually quite fast getting to the point where I was at previously and you can see me here working more with docking ports instead of um, decouplers. Still some issue right here, things were trying to be stuck together and I had to use RCS to free them of each other. But uh, yeah, I had a little bit more science than I had when I first launched my first satellite network in the pretty much beginning. So these are a lot smaller and a lot lighter than the previous satellites. Also they are designed this sp a specific way otherwise I would have done it very very big again but the con there's actually a contract with Mission Controller Extended that states put a uh, um, a satellite into a specific orbit with a certain inclination with that and that much power and with that and that much um, weight and so forth and so forth. So yeah, we're just gonna go and put this into their right positions. So we complete the contract. The contract is a custom contract, so I set it to be that I have to be between five hours, 59 minutes or six hours and one minute. But yeah, uh, while the things are being set up, I wanted to show you guys my new return of the launch vessel and with the use of these flaps as you can see here those air brakes I did a lot better on landing this and getting our carbon back home much more safe yeah a lot better than they did before in the previous episodes because if you remember correctly the first things always exploded into a million pieces we always lost a lot of parachutes and don't forget about Project Oversight. Oh God, Project Oversight. Wow. I'm so glad I didn't have to do that again. But uh, yeah, we're coming in actually quite successful. And as you can see here, the contract states we have completed it. We have a seven degree inclination and we have our orbital period of precisely six hours. So now it was just a matter of setting up all of the other satellites the same way. Well, we're gonna jump ahead when this is already done. And here you see the final product. We have them not all in the same trajectory. They have a, as I said, seven degree inclination, but they are all have an orbital period of six hours. So therefore we have a geosynchronous orbit with all three of the satellites. Now with Kerbin being done, we need to jump ahead and get our next craft, which took at least 30 days to build, um, to the moon. And moon needs four satellites, or I thought I'd want four satellites there because, yeah, reasons. Look at the awesome uh, coupler I built out of the two-stage coupler because I still didn't have the four one. <laughs> But yeah, we set ourselves on our merry way to Mun. And yeah, just basic procedure, putting all of the satellites into their right position and right places. The only problem I had is when I designed this, I thought it would work, but as you can see, somehow they are still somehow glued together and it was a bit of a problem and I thought oh god no oh god no let's let's hope I can fix this somehow so what I tried first was just try spinning it around and see if I could get them to float apart but it wouldn't work so I tried turning on RCS and see if I could nudge the satellites apart but that didn't work either 
So the next thing that I tried is after reloading really quick to dock just one of them and try to rip it off. But while I time accelerated to get there, somehow they started to float apart. And I'm like, yes, I kind of bugged myself to freedom. But yeah, these are the satellites that I designed for MUN. I'm also going to put them into an inclinated uh, orbit. And as you can see here, this is the done uh, project. We all have the satellites pointing towards MUN and pointing towards Kerbin, and we have a connection. So let's jump ahead. Next launch already. I know I'm going really fast with this. Uh, next one is the satellites for Minmus. Now I did do a little bit of a misdesign on the Minmus ones because I made them small, but I put a too powerful engine on them and no RCS, which gave me a really, really hard time on putting them into the right and stable orbit, as you will see in just a minute. But we do get to Minmus with it. We still have a whole lot of fuel with us. This time I really overcompensated when it came to fuel. I didn't want to frack up anymore. But uh, yeah, let's separate right here. And yes, this time they are small enough so they're not glued together. And they have some fancy, fancy blue satellite lights on top of them. And yeah, with a little bit of moving, you see these are the engines that have uh, 30 kilonewtons of thrust. And for such a small craft, that is a lot of thrust. So I thought I wouldn't need RCS. I could just uh, use the thruster, uh, the normal engine to get it into stable orbit. But even when I tuned it down with the most, it is 5.5 uh, thrust limit, it was still too powerful and I had a really hard time. But while I was setting up the Minmus satellite network, I said, hmm, we have a contract for Mun. So Jebediah makes his merry way once again towards Mun to be the first one to take a step to Mun, like he did 20 years ago. Or did we say 10 years ago? I don't remember. Whatever. But the contract states we're supposed to take some science from the poles. So we set ourselves up to get to the poles as quickly as we can. And of course Jebediah is the man for it. He has more than enough fuel with him and he will have a successful mission. So yeah, we're coming here in on the landing. And as you can see we had more than enough fuel, even in the drive section had enough fuel to almost get us down to the surface. However, a, we thought it deemed necessary. We deemed it necessary to crash it into the planet because we want less and less debris scattered all over places. Even though I, I don't care about debris on surfaces, I only care about debris on in orbit because then it could collide with things. I mean, it would never does because things are on rails, and the likelihood of things colliding together is very unlikely due to the fact there's not that much in space. But yeah, here uh, we're back on Mun. I was trying to find the contract that states what kind of science I will have to take. But uh, yeah, we'll just get the normal science as always, as we have done before. And um, yeah, business as usual. Nothing too particularly interesting. No new science that we haven't read before. I actually haven't put in the new um, community science in yet, but yeah. So the flag, the first moon landing, the first. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Jebediah was here again. And yeah, now we have all of the data that we require for our contract. We actually do had a set, we did have a second contract which stated we were supposed to test a small engine on the side of the craft, the LV-1R when we were in an orbit of 33 kilometers. But yeah, we did that and then we we're just hopping right back to when we come down back towards Kerbin. A lot of this was, I think I had over like eight hours of footage this time that I had to cut down and that's why there's so much time acceleration. And yeah, this is, uh, by the way, a new mod, the trajectory calculator. It pretty much projects where you're going to land, which is really, really nice. I really love 
that some guy came up with the idea for this because it's so helpful especially when we go into the stage where we're gonna have space planes and landing at the Kerbal Space Center will be a lot easier but yeah this time around um, because it was a very sharp entry and oh that was close not like it was calculated or anything <laughs> but yeah um, I ditched the entire stage because we used the heat shield to go down safe and sound. This time around, because I was so effective and I didn't frack up so much, I have actually a whole lot of money. I think I have over one million. Yeah, I, I did have more than one million. So yeah, we did get a whole bunch of signs and we unlocked new tech nodes, which then in turn took quite some time to research. And while our satellite network over Minmus was still under construction, I said, hmm, we have more contracts at state, we should take some science back from Minmus. So we sent up Bill, who was who, whose rocket was constructed at the same time as the Mun rocket was constructed. And we sent him on his merry way towards Minmus. So I am actually quite far uh, time-wise into the game because Kerbal construction time does take a long time before all of the crafts that you build are done. But I must say, I really like the mod. It makes it a really, really interesting. It's gonna be uh, quite fun to see how it will turn out when we have missions like, oh no, we stranded somewhere and we need to rescue someone, but we need time to build crafts for it, and so forth and so forth. And like, really trying to catch uh, transfer windows and things like that but uh, I'm pretty much almost there where we can go back to making normal episodes again okay jumping ahead here we are at Minmus already and we actually had so much fuel left I really did overcompensate with fuel this time or I just made my crafts that needed to get there a lot lighter because as you can see we are actually landing with our drive stage intact and with still a lot of fuel on board the only problem was landing on slopes is probably not such a good idea if they don't if you don't have any landing gears so I tried using SAS just the SAS of the capsule to be stable and stand so we can get out and do all of the science I had to muck around a little bit, but in the end, SCS was strong enough without using RCS fuel. At the beginning, I thought I was going to leave the drive stage in orbit and then just dock with it, but I had so much fuel, I thought, well, let's just bring it along. And once again, we're just doing some basic science, nothing new. As I said before, I didn't upgrade the science, community science, um, inputs because they are buggy or they're not buggy the problem is that they give you a whole lot of variety of science uh, descriptions but it doesn't cycle through them it always gives you the first one so that was the problem we had in the previous or previous in this um, series is that the uh, science information that we've got was always the same but maybe I can find a way around for it or maybe there's a modder out there who could try to find a way to cycle it and yeah Bill plants his flag and he's the first one to min miss and he's also the first one to try the mint ice cream and he does not approve because it's not actually mint ice cream but whatever so yeah once again just collecting all of the signs getting ready prepping ourselves and I did bring a lot more um, science space and mystery goo containers with me so I actually went to two more locations before heading home I thought I was gonna bring more for especially that reason but I didn't think that I was gonna have that much fuel to hop around that far could have actually brought more scientific equipment and maybe even finished off Minmus so we wouldn't actually have to build a base on Minmus this time but we'll see 
My plan right now is maybe we're not going to build the Minmus base, but instead make it more interesting and we're going to build a bigger Mun base, a very special Mun base. I'm pretty sure you guys will like it and all of you who like MKS will find my idea hopefully intriguing or maybe you guys are smarter than I am and you already came up with all the ideas for how to use the mod, but I hope I can surprise you nevertheless. So jumping back here, we can see we're going in for a third landing on Minmus on the Midlands this time. So we have Lowlands, Flats and Midlands that we've captured in this episode or in that flight. And yeah, once again, we're just trying to collect all of the scientific data from all of our parts here because the only thing that will be coming back to Kerbin is the capsule and all of the rest will be dumped and left behind to crash into various places. So a lot of the scientific data that was transferable I did transfer but um, yeah nothing too interesting about the science that you have already seen in previous episodes and yeah Bell gets back home safe and sound, but I'm going to show you that guys in the next episode, if even necessary. However, with the transmitted data already, we can jump ahead in here and unlock a whole lot more tech nodes. But all of them take time to research. It is the same thing with building crafts, all with the mod Kerbal Construction ta Time. Uh, really a big thanks to the modders. It really gives it a more realistic feel if it takes time to build things and you can upgrade your base to be faster on construction and everything and it's just it's just really really nice so yeah i hope you guys like the status update of the series uh we're almost caught up there are still server missions missing so we can start mapping the planets again and we have to start building uh, bases again for Mun, Minmus and other things. And of course we have to send missions to Moho and Duna. However, my name is Antilles, until next time.